Hey guys, you're going to love this video. We have a special guest today who will be calling me shortly and who has agreed to let me ask a few questions. And here's the phone call. Here we go. Hello. Hi. Hey, Cindy. Thank you so much Hi. for calling me. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. I think that it's important for people to hear with your own voice the love that you have for your grandchildren. And we do. I do. We all do. So we, much love for them. We can tell by the photos that there was a lot of time spent with the girls, that you and Ronnie both spent a lot of time with Bella and Cece. We did. And that, that they just, I mean, they just, you could tell by the photos, they felt so safe and loved when they were with you guys. We absolutely cherished every moment with them. And you spent a lot more time with them, I think, than what we're being told so far. Mm -hmm. It we sounds did. it sounds like you guys spent a lot of time with, with Bella and Cece. We did. We did. So I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. If if anything, like if you don't feel comfortable answering, just say so. Um, but I, I think one of the questions that I think a lot of the subscribers are interested in knowing more about is the day that your daughter-in-law had a problem with nuts and ice cream and razor blades laying all over the house. Well, that was the first first weekend she was there and we had a great time Friday, Saturday, Sunday and it wasn't, I mean, let me back up. The very first day that, that, that they came, I showed Shanann and everyone to, you know, to the room and that, Cece, she went straight to some some chocolate that I had laid out that was from Christmas. I forgot I had it out there. And she got into it. And I, sh I was showing uh, Shanann in, 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 to her bedroom. And Cece came in there with a mouthful of chocolate. I mean, her mouth, she unwrapped 12 Hershey Kisses in a matter of a minute. And she, her mouth was full of chocolate. Oh, my and goodness. Thought, oh, my God. Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. She's allergic to chocolate. And Shanann laughed. And I thought, oh, my God. She's not allergic. How She's long? Allergic because I sent them special chocolate for Easter because they couldn't, they couldn't have chocolates that were... Uh, Hershey kisses or any of these things. So I was, I didn't say anything. I didn't say a word. So up until that point, uh, you had been told by your daughter-in-law that Cece was allergic to chocolate? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, she had yeah. you sending certain types of chocolate that were on her approved list or something? Right, right. That's correct. So she had to kind of control what chocolates you gave her? Yeah. Or what candies, yeah. I guess. And, and that's why we sent special, uh, a special chocolate approved by Shanann uh, for Easter. So she said that... I didn't know it would be Hershey Kisses. You know, Hershey Kisses were, were something that anyone could eat then. But D.C. had it all over her mouth. And she, I mean, she was the happiest kid in the world. Probably hyped up on sugar by then, huh? Yes. Oh, my gosh. She had it all over her mouth, and I was thinking, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I forgot. I did not put the Hershey Kisses up, and Shanann was laughing about it, and I knew then that she was allergic. So she would let her have some chocolate, but not all chocolate. Is that what you're saying? No, I didn't think she could have any except a oh. certain kind of chocolate. And if that, I mean, it was the, it was the chocolate that, that I ordered on Amazon that was approved by her. 
So the expensive chocolate she could have, but not the everyday chocolate. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible, because I don't think allergies work that way, you know? I don't think they do either. But hindsight's twenty twenty, I guess. Oh, my yeah. goodness. That's incredible. So, so the... She didn't grab an EpiPen and try to play drama. She didn't call 911. She didn't no. say, oh, my goodness, she's allergic to chocolate. She stood there laughing. No. She just stood there I laughing. Said, I said, oh, my God. And then I saw Shanann laughing, and, of course, I knew then that she wasn't allergic. That's just incredible. And I think that at that point, then, Shanann must not have realized that she just got caught in one of her lies. No, no, she didn't. She did not. So, okay, tell us the truth, Cindy. Did you have razor blades laying all over the house that day? No, there was one razor blade to clean the stove, and that was it. Just to clean the stove. The, that stove top that that we used to use to So that was like a, a scraper. It was a I scraper? It was, yeah, the scraper. That was it. That was the only razor blade. There were no other razor blades except Ronnie's razor in the bathroom, and that was it. Uh, there were no razor blades. Did she say yeah. anything to you about razor blades laying all over the house when she was having yeah. her? Now tell us about the ice cream. The the stories we hear are there were peanuts or pistachios or sprinkled or cones or cups. There was, there was a bag of, of pistachios that I that I had for my my grandson and they were on the countertop and I and she said, Oh my gosh, Mimi, you have pistachios. I said, I know, put them on top of the stove and she she put them on top of the uh, on top, not on top of the stove, but on top of the refrigerator. And that was the end of it. It was a bag that was unopened for my grandson that I forgot that I had on the countertop. And that was that was all it was. And there was no bags of peanuts, tree nuts, or anything out in the open. My house is small. So small that Wherever Bella and Cece were, I mean, you knew where they were. I mean, they were right there. Uh, we have a very small house, and there is no way anybody could have gotten into anything, not even my refrigerator without me knowing. Well, so I was always right there. Well, did you give the girls ice cream? I gave a... Uh, Dylan went in the, the freezer and got a vanilla ice cream, a Walmart vanilla ice cream. And, yeah, she, Dylan did get that. And that was the big culprit, was the Walmart and vanilla? that was the culprit. That was when Cece had a meltdown and wanted the same thing. But Cece could have had ice cream because we went to, the, we went to Walmart when they came here and she had ice cream not in the same cup but she had ice cream and she could have gotten that ice cream and yes I did say that you can't always have what you want I did say that you know because Cece had the ice cream that all Shanann had to do was go in there and get Cece her ice cream and put it in Right, oh, right, and that and that's right. That's you all she had to do, and, and nothing would have come of it. And you took her to Walmart, right? And you spent a ton of money yeah, so I that did. she I, could have exactly I, what she wanted I, there. Absolutely. When they came down here, I said, "Let's go to Walmart and get everything that you need." And they got everything they wanted and they needed. Everything. There was nothing, nothing that that. I don't know what I could have done. 
So at the point that you're all I've done. at the point that the ice cream started happening, then your daughter in law could have gone to the freezer, picked out the ice cream that was on her approved list. Absolutely. And scooped she out So when yeah. when the ice cream came out, your daughter-in-law started yelling? Yeah. She said, I know that this isn't fair. I know this is hard for you, Stacey. And she went on and on and on and on. And I, that, that's when I said, you know, you can't have everything that you want. Go back, go back in there. Go get her the ice cream she needs. What did she say to you before she left? She said, uh, she came charging down the hallway and said, you tried to kill my child. And then that's when it was over. I was done. I said, I, I can't take this anymore. You know, I didn't try to kill anyone. I didn't try to do anything. Um, Tell tell us about how the kids were hiding. Uh, when all the argue, uh, the arguing was starting, it was Dalton and Dylan said <clears throat> Adela, Adela was scared and she said, I don't wanna leave. I wanna stay with you guys. Oh my goodness. And Dalton and Dylan said, Hide behind the hide behind the dollhouse. So she was hiding from her own mom so she wouldn't have to leave and go with her? Yeah, she didn't want to leave and she wanted to stay because she loved Dalton and Dylan. Oh my gosh, she loved playing with them and so did Stacy. They, they were having a great time. They were having a, the time of their life uh, playing with the dollhouse and playing in the pool, trampoline, all of it. They were having a good time. Why do you why do you think she became so angry so quickly? What do you think her problem was? Because Jamie came over and dropped Dalton and Dylan off and that's when everything changed. When Dalton and Dylan were dropped off and Jamie had to go back to work and everything changed after that. It was had she seen Jamie since I, I know we've heard stories about how she fired Jamie from the bridal party? Yeah, no, no, I mean Jamie was ordering drives of her. Jamie was getting along fine with her. That's what I'm talking about. You you don't know the Shanann. It was whiplash. It was one minute she was okay and the next minute she wasn't. So and that's what was so disturbing. You didn't know how to take her anymore. So when when she left, did she? We've heard people say that she said that the girls would never step foot in your house again. Did she say that to you? Yes, yes, she did. She absolutely did. That must have been heartbreaking. It was, and I told, and I remember. Stacy coming up to me and I said, I'm going to see you at your party. And she was just laughing and just smiling. And I said, I will see you there. And I wanted to be there. We all wanted to be there. But then, you know, the text messages, and not the text messages, but the Facebook posts started coming and coming and coming. And then for a week, they didn't. And, and Ronnie and I thought, well, we can go to the party. And then the day of the party, it she started all over again and and they said we're not going to be welcome there you know we 
I wish we were strong enough to go there. I really do. I wish we could have said, I don't care what any of these people say, I'm going. But we weren't strong enough to do it. But then... Uh, and I, I regret it to this day. Honestly, I do. But then you did go to Myrtle Beach as planned, right? Yeah, we went to Myrtle Beach, and they were five miles away, and we were still not allowed to see them. And I wish, again, that we would have said, the heck with what anybody thinks. I'm just going. You know, what can anyone do? I'm going. I'm going to see them. But we didn't. We didn't do any of that. And I regret all of it. Every single bit of it. Well, I think I think at the same time with the with the way the term with domestic violence and child abuse is always walking on eggshells. I think that if you're if you're worried, So con- and it's so contradictory, too, to complain that you didn't go to the birthday party, but then to not allow you to see the girls when you did go to Myrtle Beach. Yeah, we did go to Myrtle Beach, and we wanted to see them, and no one would allow us to see them, and it's only when Chris called us, you know, and said, you know, you know, I love you guys, and, you know, she won't allow you to see them, and... can tell with the like I said before with the photos and with the videos yeah. and everything yeah. you, you can just yeah. you can just tell that that your love for your grandbabies is strong we love them so much we love Bella, Stacy, Dalton, Joan. we love them all and there's nothing we wouldn't have done for them not, not one thing not one thing we wouldn't have It's back to Well, it's back to also the walking on eggshells and what you said before the word whiplash. If you're yeah. if you're not sure what to do, then you're trying to just kind of try to keep the peace, not realizing of course yeah. the, the tragedy that was about to occur. I have another question, but I feel bad asking you because I, um, there was, there was a lot said about the whole idea of the Tylenol and the Benadryl. Um, have you ever seen your daughter-in-law give Cece and Bella Benadryl and Tylenol at nighttime when they weren't sick? Yes. Was that something that you saw, like? Did it happen more than once? Did it happen routinely? Every time I saw them. What? Every time I, I was ever with them. Yes. Even at my house. Even at their house. Yes. Absolutely. And they left, she left the Tylenol and then the drug here that, that, that she did not take with her. That she bought at Walmart when we went. And yes. Yes, absolutely. I saw all of it. So at bedtime, she would 
give them each a dose of whichever one, the, the yeah. Benadryl oh. or the Tylenol, or would she give, oh. she would give oh. them both? Yeah, both? Both on the same, at the same time? Yeah. And they weren't sick? No. Oh my goodness. That is absolutely shocking. I thought it was Tylenol or Benadryl, yeah. which is shocking. I've got both of them here. I've got both of them here that, that she gave to them. She didn't take them back home. When they stayed at your house, did she put them to sleep at 630? Yes. And then how long did they sleep, like all the way to morning? Of course, if they've got a dose of Tylenol and a dose of Benadryl, I imagine they did sleep all the way till morning. They did. Did that worry you, seeing her giving them drugs when they weren't what? when they weren't sick? Yeah, yeah, it did because I didn't do that to my kids, and I knew if I said something, they would be upset. And I know I should have, I should have. back I think to walking on eggshells I think it goes it goes back to walking goes back to the walking on eggshells because if you think about it Cindy just my opinion if you think about it you had already been through the situation before the uh, wedding where you yeah. were accused of of cross contaminating the food or whatever and then wasn't it like I can't remember was it like four months that you didn't get to speak with your son after that eight months, eight months. so so that makes sense that you would be hesitant to ever speak up because you wouldn't have wanted to have caused any kind of issue where you wouldn't be able to see your I grandchildren. I was afraid of her. I was afraid of her. I knew that we wouldn't be able to see Chris or Bella or Stacy again if I ever said anything. And I knew I wouldn't have any backup if I did. Because I don't think uh, Ronnie, I, I, I believe Ronnie would have said, just keep your mouth shut. Don't say anything. And, and Yeah, just trying to keep kind of the peace and everyone talking. Keep the peace, right. But, uh, it didn't feel right. When I, was, when I was there, I didn't give them Tylenol. I didn't give them Benadryl. I didn't give them anything. And they didn't go to sleep. At all. I remember Sandy having to come up there because the girls the girl would not go to sleep. And she came up there and she took, she took uh, Bella downstairs and Cece because they just did not want to go to sleep. I didn't give it. I didn't give it to them. I didn't give them the medication. Well, they were and probably really excited to have both sets of grandparents right there. Absolutely. You know, that was probably a lot of fun for them. I just couldn't do it. I couldn't give them all this medication that, I mean, why do you give kids cotton on a blood job? All this stuff, why do you do that? It just didn't make sense to me. They weren't sick. 
Well, and 6.30 bedtime. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Yeah, and a 6.30 bedtime doesn't make sense either. I mean, consistent. My kids went to sleep at 6.30. Oh, my God, no. There's a normal kid that went to sleep at 8, 9, 10. Exactly. Exactly. And in the summer months, it was harder to get them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I, yes, I just... You don't get children to sleep at 6.30, you know, after they, you know, they, they don't get up and wondered about that on the weekends, so she'd put him down for a long nap in the afternoon and then... Yeah. And they did. They had long naps. They had long naps and then they get up they eat and they shower and they back to bed. Yeah. They were. They were up and 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 they say thank you so much for answering our questions. Um, I I can only imagine that our subscribers are going to have a lot more questions. I just want you to know that we love them so much. We love them so much. And we love you guys. I think that's... I think it's evident by your photos and your videos. I'm so glad to see those photos surfacing because, you know, it's been, um, it'll be two years in August and we haven't seen seen any of the photos yeah. with you and the grandkids. And now all of a sudden we're seeing them all over. It's like... I know, and it's still so hard. It's still so hard. It's still so hard. It's just so hard. It's just so hard. I think it's evident yeah. in, in that video where she's reading the bedtime story and yeah. Cece's yeah. jumping around. <laughs> that was so much fun. <laughs> she was so assertive, her, her voice. That was a wonderful video. That was so nice to see, yeah. to see her so happy, you know, the, the smile on her face, but also the confidence in her voice, because yeah. in a lot of the videos that we've seen that were posted online, she, yeah. she doesn't come across as being very self-confident or assertive oh, at all. Yeah. Wasn't she? Oh my gosh. She was letting me know about those monkeys. <laughs> 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 and then when Cece started bouncing away, she's like, get back yeah. here, sit down. <laughs> she was a ball of fire. She was so busy. I mean, she had no fear, none whatsoever. Bella was cautious, but when she saw Bella and Cece on the trampoline, they were both on fire. Yeah. Listen. Yeah, that, we saw yeah. that video. They were on that trampoline and in the pool. I have another question. We've been told that the girls were afraid of the dirt. Do you know anything about that? Uh, no, they did not like to get dirty. Was it the dirt itself or was it that they just didn't want to get dirty? Did they not like the dirt or was it they just didn't want to get dirty? Uh...
weekends and 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 uh, they they were kind of they were very afraid of the chickens, so they didn't want to get near any of them. But no, they didn't like to get dirty. They liked to stay clean. They were not they were not dirty kids at all. They did not like to get dirty. So they were kind of like city kids instead of country kids? Absolutely. They were city kids. They were not country kids. <laughs> not like Dalton and Dylan. Dalton and Dylan will get down and dirty. <laughs> but, but it sounds like... PC, they did not like to get any kind of dirt on them. It sounds like they had a wonderful time with you guys when they were staying there. Oh, they did. They did. Uh, Robert took them on one of the the four roller and drove them around, you know, the yard, and they loved it, and uh, they had a good time. They good. Did. They had a good time. And a good, they time. Had a really good time. Playing with her cousins and spending yeah. time. If, if only they could see where Jamie lives now, and the chickens, and and the dogs, and the cats, and everything that they had, and the turkeys and everything that they have, oh my gosh, they would have a ball. I mean, driving around the woods and the four wheelers and everything, they would have such a good time. They would have had a blast. Well, I I wanna yeah. just I wanna say again, thank you so much for talking with us, Cindy. I really appreciate it. I know it Oh, thank you. I know it isn't easy at all and I'm so it's sorry not. for the pain that you guys are feeling. I think you know, obviously it's a tragedy, obviously, and I, I can't oh, even it is. Be, oh, it is. begin to imagine. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and, and say our goodbyes, and then we'll talk again soon, okay? Okay. Okay. Right, thank you. Thank Very you, dear. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Wow. Wow. Well, there you have it, guys. That was the voice of Bella and Cece's Mimi, who I have no doubt loved her granddaughters and loves her granddaughters with all her heart.